So we're back. And we're going to start the painting process. Well, more accurately, we're going to start the priming process. Uh, interesting. Reading a little debate on Reddit at the moment about how to prime models. Can you brush prime them? Well, as I said, this is a you know beginners or like a sort of basic build, something that anybody could undertake. And I'm trying to use a method that you know, basically anybody could do, and you know, fairly straight, you know, uh, easy to achieve results is really what we're after. So, the first thing that we do is preparation, and preparation in this case is really having the parts ready for mounting. You saw in the construction video how we got that wire underneath there so we can hold this when we're gonna, when we're gonna prime it and paint it. Then, for the turret, there's another method. This is just, you know, an extra piece of sprue and it's been glued into the, you know, the underneath, so the bottom. So that's quite a handy holder for, for, um, for the turret. And then the final piece is that HMG. And I've used a, like, it's a crocodile clip. It's a proprietary kit. In, in this case, what I've got, I've got this, um, this set. It's called um, Mr. or My Eclipse from Mr. Hobby. You know, it's a bit overboard, really. I mean, I've got a baseboard with some alligator clips, but I'll just show you this. You know, it's a, a mounting so that we can basically hold the parts when they're drying. And that really is handy. But I'm gonna show you another way to do this. This is really, you know, let's, let's, keep, it, let's keep it really basic, okay? We've got a box, okay? All we need is a scalpel. Let's just get a hole inside here. Make a hole. Okay. There you go. That's it. As simple as that. Yeah. Uh, I used to use um, actually styrofoam or, you know, that packing sort of foam that you can just push these things into. That works just as well as one of these, you know, and these things are quite expensive as well. But um, I'll just show you some things. And also, if you haven't got the alligator clips, what you could do, you could actually take a, um, I'm going to show you that as well. Take a toothpick and just super glue it onto an attachment point just on the bottom. And then you can just snap it off after you finish priming. And then we've also got a glove on. We've got the gloved hand. I don't want to get spray paint all over my hands, basically. And it's pretty good practice um, because you're going to be touching things and you're going to probably upset people as well if you touch uh, maybe the walls with some paint, yeah? So that's going to protect my hand from when I'm, I'm painting. And then I'm going to go through the primers. Now these are, again, this is that Mr. Surfacer primer. This is a sprayable one. So this is a bespoke primer. And it's expensive. It really is quite expensive to buy. Here's another one, 1200 Now these are my, they used to be my go-tos. I used to buy these non-stop, yeah? But they are expensive. So... In our case, we're using some automotive, uh, in this case, Halfords, which is like a, uh, a brand in the United Kingdom. And this is just matte black spray paint. We want matte paint for this primer. It's not a primer, it's just matte black spray paint. And okay, this was a bit expensive, about eight pounds, so like, you know, uh, $9. But you've got a huge can, yeah? It's gonna get you through quite a few models, yeah? And also, automotive, uh, spray paints, matte spray paints, you can get them anywhere. So you don't need to, you know, go to a specialist hobby shop. Um, the problem in Britain is at the moment is that our normal postal service charge a lot of money to deliver these. So you buy the cans, they're seven or eight pounds and the postage is seven or eight pounds. So you end up, you know, 18 pounds or $20 just for one can. So to keep things basic, we're going to use just a spray can. I'm not going to show you the um, spray painting just in this example. because It's late at night and I'm just going out in the garage, but I'm going to show you a video later on. But this is my tips, okay? The first thing is to really, what I do, you shake these up and agitate them. They've got the metal agitator inside. And then you, you do that for two minutes. What I tend to do is actually, I put the can into some uh, quite hot water and leave it there for about you know a minute or so and that gets the pressure up in these cans so this spray comes out with a lot of um, a vigor you know you don't want it spluttering you want it to come out really quick and then when you're spraying the action is this this is really all it's about and you can see 
of the people. What you do is you run it back and forth, up and down. Don't hold it on at all. And what you're doing, actually, you're applying light coats and then misting it off, misting off, misting on, and then just building it up slowly until we've got all of that covered up. So I'm going to go out into the garage and, and do that. I really recommend doing that outside as well. Don't do it indoors because of the, the build-up of fumes, etc. And my God, you're going to upset family members, I tell you, as I know from better experience. So let's get on with that. Okay, so we've applied the, the black spray paint, the black primer, black spray paint. All those parts are covered now. They're just drying off at the moment. And there's been, you know, it's good coverage. It's got in everywhere. And this is really going to help us later on with the painting because I use black primer on all of my armor builds because it does two things. One, it obviously provides the primer, protective uh, the plastic covering and secondly it lays in these dark shadow areas immediately so we haven't got any hint of you know white plastic peering out or anything that uh, could detract from the finished appearance there and then there's something else this is an optional step but we're gonna use it on this one what we're gonna do now you may have heard of black and white technique well, we're going to do something along those lines. We're going to use some white spray paint now. This is Skull White from Games Workshop. Had it for years, not really used it. But this is going to be sprayed very selectively. We aren't going to be priming everything. And you can sort of ask, well, why are we paint it black anyways? Well, this white layer is only going to go on the top surfaces that's all, and it's going to be just a quick mist coat. So you're going to have black underneath, white on top. I'm going to do that again off camera because it's a little bit difficult to film, but I'll show you the result, and then you're going to hopefully understand why I did that later on. It's going to make it a lot easier to define shadow and light areas when we come to painting. So I'll okay, continue with that's that. That's the primer completed with the white oversprayed just on top just show you that you can see that basically the underneath still remains that matte black on top this sort of like gray shade because it hasn't come out exactly white and again on the turret as well you can just see i just sort of hit the sides as well so that's going to help us with painting so we've got the fundamentals of um, some shading to do. But we'll talk about that later on. Leave this dry off and then we'll start the acrylic painting process using brushes. Okay, we're going to talk about acrylic painting. And that's a hell of a lot of stuff in front of us at the moment. I'm going to tell you what this is not about, okay? We're talking about acrylic brush painting. These are water-based paints, okay? So we're talking about Examples are Model Color by Vallejo, Panzer Aces also by Vallejo, Model Air is also an acrylic, it's more for airbrushing but uh, you, can, you can brush paint with it. This is uh, Ammo of MIG acrylic colors. And there's several more options on the market as well. There's um, AK Interactives. Uh, there's also craft paints as well, genuine acrylic craft paints that you can buy as well. And there's a few other brands like Life Color as well. Okay, what we are not talking about are these, which are the lacquer based paints. So we're not hand painting with them. Neither are we hand painting with Tamiya's acrylic paints. They aren't true acrylic paints they call them acrylic paints because they will mix with water but not really i mean you can see it's flammable it's lacquer based yeah um we're concentrating on these paints they've got properties in that they're pigments and that they are bound with a resin and um figure painters very much au fait with using them yeah Armour modelers, 
not so much aircraft modelers not so much ship modelers not so much but we're we want to keep this simple we're gonna we're keeping this down to sort of basics as well um with these paints what we don't need is this we don't need enamel thinner we don't really need this acrylic thinner but i'm going to come back to that in a minute we don't need this acrylic thinner either the uh, x20a which is really for the tamiya paints okay we've got airbrush cleaners we're going to use a bit of that we are not going to use thinner either that is for airbrushing this is going to be our main ingredient water that's all we need that's how we're going to be doing um our we're, we're going to get our paint mixtures using water okay i've got deionized water here big you know uh two and a half liter jug of it the reason i'm doing that is purely for the fact that i live in a hard water area so i've got calcium and and uh, minerals inside the tap water here um I don't want that inside the paint, yeah? So I'm using that. Elsewhere, just feel free to use tap water. It's it's a preference thing. I've always used that. Okay, the big jog is kind of maybe a little bit over, overdone, but uh, you can, you know, a big jug like this, it'll last, a, you know, it'll last a lifetime. So decan it into a smaller bottle, yeah? Ah, okay. One other ingredient that we're going to use is something called a flow aid or a flow enhancer and this one's a liquitex one and you can get them for um vallejo as well do their own this flow aid and this what this does is going to break the surface tension when we apply the paint but i'm going to come to those details later on and we're going to need obviously some other things which are the paint brushes now we've got a small scale model here yeah so we don't want brushes that are too big. Yeah, neither do we want these. We're gonna come back to these. Okay, these are Windsor Newton Series 7. These are fine sable brushes. They are beautiful and I've had them a long time. I bought a lot of them thinking that they were gonna wear out quite quickly and I'm still on my original set. They are unbelievable. But we're not gonna use them for base coating. We're gonna come back to them later on. The fact is, acrylics are harsh on your paintbrush, yeah? And more so, when you're using these fine brushes against the texture of plastic, you start to wear them down quite quickly. So really, what we're doing is we're going to be using cheap brushes, yeah? Nylons or uh, synthetic brushes, round brushes, you know, with quite a good tip, good finish that can give us coverage because we're just applying a base coat so we just want coverage yep and we also need a palette as well so this is what i've uh, you can get you know you can get your um, artist palettes etc this is what i'm using i'm using these uh, disposable plastic plates and i've been doing that for quite a while now when it came to acrylic detailing uh and Later on, I'm going to show you how to do a white wet palette as well, which is really straightforward. But, um, you know, this is this is just common stuff that's easy to obtain. So really what we've got our ingredients are acrylic paint, uh, water, water for the thinner, brushes that are appropriate for the model. And this is what one thing most guys leave out. We want a really good light source on what we're doing here. We want either a, like it's a bit obviously cloudy today, so it's not great. You want a good light source when you're painting. You really do. You don't want to be straining your eyes. And we aren't going to need this at the moment, but an optivizer is really what I, is one of my choice tools for detail painting. Don't need that at the moment. Then we just need some containers as well. Okay, we're going to use one of these. Uh, with, as I mentioned earlier, some airbrush cleaner. These are all alcohol sort of base things. Yeah, airbrush cleaner, the thinner, etc. It's all basically the same. Just make sure it's acrylic uh, airbrush cleaner. 
or acrylic thinner okay and the only reason we we're not going to use that per se to um to mix the paint with all we're going to do is keep our brushes clean yeah and then uh you need your princess party cups of course no you don't all you need is um any other container okay be it a plastic cup paper cup disposable cup with which is going to be filled with uh, good old h2o and that again is going to be used to clean off the brush consistently and there is one other ingredient as well we need simply a piece of white paper that i'll show you later on and that's really all we need to to get this uh, process going so i'm going to show you now step by step how we make up that mix of paint and how we apply that base coat on the model and uh, just bear that in mind yeah that we don't need that other stuff okay don't get, don't get too confused about it ask questions all you like but this acrylic this tutorial this paintbrush is about acrylics and the reason i'm using well the reason i am brush painting is one i've never done that before i've always used an airbrush but we're a beginner build here okay not everybody has an airbrush not everybody is gonna you know go out and spend up to 200 300 dollars on um, airbrushes and compressors when they're starting modeling they're going to be brush painting so results can be achieved by brush painting well i sincerely hope so as i experiment yeah but we'll see what results we can obtain and acrylics as well they are non-toxic that is really one of the reasons that we that we're using them. they're easy to clean up yeah we don't need to use any of these harsh um uh let's well, i'll show you an example is basically sort of like strong stuff yeah strong like the sort of uh solvent based cleaners xylenes um here's another one xylene it's marked out obviously as uh irritant flammable yeah we're not using anything like that we're using alcohol we're not using cellulose thinners again because these things well i use them all the time in airbrushing but for brush painting we don't really need to yeah we can just use water and we can use the acrylic paints and we need to learn how to paint with them um at some point i made you a tutorial on painting well, I will do on airbrushing for sure on the other paints, but this one is about acrylics, okay? And and the real, I mean, another advantage of this stuff is is this, yeah? That, good shake. One of the qualities here is that, okay, you spilled it on your, on your, on your, uh, your desk or your kitchen surface. Yeah. It just wipes up it just wipes up there's no odor there's no smell there's no staining left behind yeah that's a considerable advantage really so you can work in the house with these not everybody's got the luxury of a big hobby room so you can do this inside your kitchen you can maybe even do it inside your front room you know in a limited sort of environment so uh let's get on and, and uh, see, see how we get with this okay so we're ready to start First thing we look at is what we're going to paint. This is our references for this build. Yeah, our references. We're going to use basic build. Don't research on the internet. Have a look at the box art. Got a perfectly stunning example of the IS-2 in this 4BO Russian green camouflage. Have a look at the way the artist has painted this, uh, the, the box art, yeah? He's got um, highlights on the upper edges. He's got areas of shadow. He's got depth. He's got texture. Now, imagine that was just one plain color. Yeah, it wouldn't be that interesting. Yeah, it's um, it's got feelings of light and texture on it. Yeah, but principally, no matter what, that tank is green. Okay. So let's not get hung up about all the colors and all the masses of variations. And to keep it simple, okay, we've got 
a green it's nato green it's a green color okay that's going to be our base color for for this tank yeah and we may lighten it with some white for the highlights or some of this sand sand gray color as well the other dominant color is of course the tracks yeah now the instructions will call these out in steel or metal or something crazy yeah don't uh keep them like a brownie black like rust color really is your best option so we've got a a, a dark brown rust yeah whatever you have to hand use it yeah for don't go out and and, and buy stuff just for the one kit you want to try see what you've got even if you if you're going to get your craft paint just get a green and a brown that's a green brown and a white and that's probably all you're going to need for your first build okay so we've got everything set up in terms of paint and you don't the first thing to do is to really give these a good shape get them these ones from ammo of mig they've got the agitators inside them Now, these are designed for brush paint and for airbrushing. We're dil uh, diluting ours, and you don't need big quantities. You only need a couple of drops, yeah? And then we've got some H2O, the water. And all we, all we need, again, is a couple of drops, yeah? About So we're doing about 50-50 ratio, which is going to thin down that paint. Mix it together, it starts to run yeah are you happy with that green you may at this stage think no nah, it's a bit too dark i want it lighter okay we won't we'll tackle that a bit later on right second point here offload the brush yeah offload the brush it wants to be how would you describe it damp not wet and let's apply the first coats of paint yeah just using smooth brush action so just start laying on the paint just gently you don't want it to sort of flood or you know be so thick that it covers everything you want that transparent look to it that is really what you what you want for your first coat too many people will try at the very first go to get 100 percent coverage and that is going to obscure all the details you're going to lose all the you know this pre-shading technique and you're going to find it frustrating as well because the paint will it will be unsatisfactory in appearance yeah so obviously the trick is here is um figure paint is called this um blocking in yeah we just need to cover everything and that's why you know spray can spray cans as well is another great method of just getting full coverage cheaply um but this this is um it's going on really nice the acrylic paint as well because it's water-based dries very very quickly so as you're applying this first coat this base layer on the stuff that you laid down before is sort of drying out and i think some people even use a hairdryer to even <laughs> speed up that process we don't have to do that we've, we've got plenty of paint here you see, see how fine let's let's sort of zoom in and, and uh, have a look yeah it's you can still see through it it's transparent yeah and more so on where we've got the the dark sh the dark shade as well yeah you can see it beating up yeah that's because that paint the is slightly glossy so it's having trouble breaking the surface tension again don't worry about it too much you don't want pools of it you need to not have it sort of clump together or else you're going to get a very poor appearance um and surface but move the paint all over don't worry about it 
come back to it later on when it's dried off and then you're going to hit another layer simple as that yeah, just make sure you offload that brush every time figure paint figure painters they, they cover very small areas at a time and i've seen them using their nail as a palette can you believe that well we, we've got a lot of um well, not a lot it's 172 scale model we've got some areas to cover it's going to take a while but over time it's going to build up i just think it's important to point this out because it would be great to show you how it's going to look you know finished all covered in green paint but a lot of people don't realize that the first few coats are going to be like this they're going to be very thin very thin layers and um it's going to help with the we're going to get that shading appearance as well because we can we can see what we're we're wanting to achieve we already know the light areas and the and the darks so i'm going to continue on with that i'll show you this you know a couple of more layers as it sort of builds up but and then i'll i'll tell you how many it takes to to get that coverage yeah okay i just thought i'd show you where we are with the turret that's about if we can get this in focus that's about three coats of paint on there and um, it's looking reasonable coverage is getting there it's going to need a couple of more coats but uh, there's no brush marks or anything the cast texture is looking quite good there as well and i'm quite happy with with that color you know as the base color the base color greens good and then we're about i think i did about two coats on this so this needs a few more uh, the difficulties that you do have with with the paint is it's trying to get into little nooks and crannies yeah and in such a case what you do is you take quite a watered down mixture you know like even more dilute than possible and just apply it as best you can and it'll take quite a few applications but it's the best way to get it into all those little areas so it's a bit wet it's not like a dry application i was doing doing before but you can see that the coats are just sort of building up the brush the brush strokes will disappear after a few more coats and when i've been doing this as well i've been looking at areas of interest as well where i'm going to be applying highlights and remember when you're painting hold everything in different angles as well so you can get you know in the places that you usually miss because even like a little area of black will really stick out on the upper surfaces if you see it from certain angles you can see there just behind that fuel tank that needs coverage but we'll we'll get to that carry on i'll show you what this looks like when the base coat is completed okay the base coat of that green is finished and also still drying off the tracks have been painted as well so you can see it's quite a good coating on top the tracks are brown not the neatest job doesn't really matter and you can see that some of the browns go on the green the greens on the brown of the tracks but they're basically covered for the tracks i use this um dark tracks color from i'm of meg or just use a brown or use a brown and black or use what you feel would work for you turrets coated and covered as well 
paint's dried in sort of matte, uh, satin type of sheen on at the moment. Now, in the box art, we said there's some highlights, bits and pieces. So what I've taken is the green and some matte white. And you see here, I've taken one drop of green. Basically, I'll show you this again. Okay, a drop of white. Yeah. But the secret here is don't paint that on at all. <laughs> you need to go back to these layers, these really dilute layers. So what you're doing is you're adding water quite dilute this time mixing it together and it's really you can see it's like a what well it is watercolor it's acrylic it's really thin mix look, look at this you can see on the paper you see it's just translucent yeah okay and this is going to go onto highlight areas and it's going to take quite a few coats to do it and then also i'm going to show you this on the turret side which is one of these not difficult sort of strange areas i tend to paint these in terms of contrast half the bottom will be the dark shade and the upper half will be the lighter shade. So what I do, I start working in the filter. It's like a filter color on top. And instead of like painting it, I sort of stipple it on and let it dry. Okay, I'll come back and show you how that looks when it's dry. We'll do the detail painting. So that's the highlights applied. Uh, you're going to see it's a bit scruffy. And actually, that doesn't matter too much. Yeah, you can see there's like, it's a bit overdone in some areas. Yeah, but if you draw back a little bit, yeah, say about there, you can see that all the edges have sort of been hit with a certain highlight. And it's randomized the paintwork somewhat. And it's got away already from that toy-like appearance of having the, the one color. And it's placed us in a good position for further highlights later on. Okay. And I'll just show you the turret again quickly. Same, same deal with the turret. And some of the panels have been sort of drawn out. And you can see the sort of stipple on there using that um, lighter color. So really, already there's some visual interest, be it scruffy or otherwise, yeah? Now, we want to make some details pop. And on these tanks, they have got the... Pioneer tools, uh, mainly that you can see the saw there and that spade, that recovery hook. And we're going to other paint some of the details. All we need is now a few colors. I use this basically dark flesh color as the um, color for the wood on the pioneer tools on nearly everything I paint and I use this uh, it's a model air color I, I don't even um, do they do it in model color I'm not too sure but I've always used this model air so it's already thinned camo black brown just get a brown a brown and a black and mix it together you got the same sort of thing I use this as the undercoating color to everything metallic so that is going to be uh, those tracks, the spare track links on there. Uh, the exhaust 
possibly I need to check to see if they're going to be rusty or otherwise certainly the recovery chain the tow hook and the sort of digging part of the spade and oh yeah we'll also add the wood to those to the uh, mg to the spade grips at the back can't get that focus at all uh what else do we need we're going to use this color i don't have a matte black i've got a satin black at the moment satin black is going to be painted on the horn and the machine gun the rear machine gun i think and that's about it so again same thing with these paints all we're doing is again using a good mixture make sure it's really well mixed a little drop down and now we're going to go to using our really fine delicate detail paint brushes i'm going to use a number one windsor newton um, paint brush really fine brush this one's getting towards the end of its life i must admit but it's um it's it's done well yep uh same thing again just take a drop of water okay mix the two together take off the excess and uh, let's see if we can do this live mode yeah lay on the paint very very delicately Just build it up don't blob it on once it's dry go back and repeat another layer And really, that's all there is to it. So I'll paint up all those details. Well, well that's all the brushwork complete. The details are still sort of drying, but basically the headlamp and the horn have gone in that satin black. The Pioneer saw has got the black brown base coat and wooden handles i did the exhaust outlets also in that black brown the recovery cable also in the black brown and then around the other side okay that tow hook black brown then f dark flesh for the handles nothing on here this is all the same and then on the MG, just the handles, the spade grips. Okay, this next bit is a little bit difficult. Okay, not difficult, it's just a complication. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a gloss coat on top of this. Yeah, a gloss coat, seriously. No matte coat at this stage, we're going Gloss, uh, gloss over everything the tracks the lower body um the only thing that i'm probably not going to bother with is the mg um two reasons one how to rethink it's a kit out the box building's been great why don't we just test out those decals why don't we try out and see if we can apply those decals because well, we need some practice at it, yeah? We're, big, we're a beginner's build. Sorry about the dog barking. And uh, let's see if we can get them to work, even over this difficult surface, yeah? Let's see if... It, so we want a gloss background to that. Also, we want to protect all that paint work. And really, the weathering is going to use gloss 
um, to help with certain effects okay so I'm gonna give it a gloss coat and then um, show you results and then we're gonna start weathering in earnest <laughs> 